Hi folks, thank you very much for joining me again. I've got a fun packed show for you tonight. We've got conclusions, we've got a rant, we've got updates, we've got a new love um, and more. So stay tuned. That was a Gretsch with gauge 10 flat rounds from Tomastic Infeld uh, playing my new piece that I've learned, which I'll talk more about in a minute. Hope you liked it. But first, let's have one last piece of guitar playing for three and a bit minutes. This time, let's go up two gauges to 12s and down a tone in our tuning to D standard. Um, and then we'll chat. Let's go. <laughs> Thank you. 
like that and my self-indulgence didn't bore you too much and um, by the way the opening piece on the Gretsch that was taken from a wee video from a young lady on YouTube playing Rachmaninoff so if I do that she's the first one on the list I don't know if you can see that Edith Peugeot would that be how you pronounce her French name so she does the whole Rachmaninoff thing I just thought I'm just gonna cherry pick what I want because I don't like the whole nylon and string thing particularly and I've turned it into the start of Rachmaninoff and then me going off in my own little direction pleasing myself I hope you liked it that's what that was um, anyway you might remember uh, around three years ago I did a video where I first tried flatworms and I tried them on my Telecaster and I did a comparison video between rounds and flats I'll put a link to that in the description and so began, so began, so began a kind of a, a, a love affair with flatworms. Um, trying them on different guitars, different brands, different gauges. Um, and I learned a lot. And ultimately, I can tell you right now, I absolutely love flats. I adore them on some guitars, but not others. So at the moment, I've got them on... Well, I think I'll always have them on three out of eight of my guitars. The big elephant in the room, of course, is the fact that they come with a an un, with a wound G string. So rather than taking that off and replacing it with a wound with an unwound G, I just lean into being a different player on a flat wound guitar. After all, it was Madison Cunningham and Tobias that kind of inspired that way of playing in that sound and so neither of the two of them are particularly trademarked by their David Gilmore style bands they're much more chord based and half step rubs and all that to be type stuff that I love so I just play that kind of stuff when I pick up a, a guitar strung with flats um, so I have dedicated the Gretsch the Jazzmaster and my Black Les Paul Custom to wearing flats full time. Everything else is just weird. Um, the Telecaster was a conundrum because that guitar sounded wonderful with flats and that was my first feeling of that plunky sound. Of, this is fantastic. But then I, you, I can't not have rounds on my Telecaster because I'm a, I love playing my Roy Buchanan's and things like that. And when I think of Telecaster, I think of bitey, bitey, ice picky in a nice way. And there's no way I'm going to give that up. And rather than go and buy a second Telecaster to have with flats, I think the Jazzmaster gets me in that zone. Actually, the Gretsch was interesting as well because the reason I put flats on the Gretsch, apart from the fact that it really suits flats, was the Gretsch being hollow. Oh my God, what a noisy guitar when you're sliding your hand with your wedding ring up the neck. 
it amplifies all the sounds and even your fingers brushing across the tops of round round strings although you hear that on any round round guitar the Gretsch just amplified it and so it was a great it was a way to make it shut up and suddenly I've got an extra benefit other than the fact that it sounds great with flats so that was interesting so if you have a, a hollow guitar and it amplifies all your clunking as you move from chord to chord consider flat ones what else have I been doing in my little life oh yeah I, I, there's a guitar that I would quite like to try not to buy I'm not in the market for any guitars at the moment but there's a maker of guitars called Atkin in the UK and they make they're quite famous for making really nice acoustics but they're dabbling in electrics and I see a lot of different companies making electric guitars and a lot of them just don't most of them don't turn me on because I'm old and I'm, an, I'm a Les Paul Strat telly guy and all these offerings from these companies like PGD and things like I can see why you know they're pushing the envelope and trying different mashups and stuff but most of them leave me cold but there's one guitar that keeps keeps me looking at it and it's an Atkin Mindhorn that's just their, their model and it's Kind of an offset body i'll show you in fact um, and i've written to atkin they have not replied but here's that's an atkin mind horn and they relic it you know i mean i'd have to it'd have to be relic for me so i've written to them saying i really would like a shot of that and if they would like any extra exposure on youtube please feel free to send me one and i'll play some lovely music on it and then i'll send it back no reply but we shall see. Let's go. I did the same with, of course, the Empreze amplification. That's how I got my hands on that amp. I wrote to them and it took a while to come back and hopefully maybe Atkin will come back on that. What else? My new love, Casper Hedge Lesson. That's probably not how you pronounce it. Thank you to uh, both Johan Valquist. Is that your last name, Johan? And also Simon Freeze, two people I know that I've been watching my channel uh, for quite a while and they both pretty much on the same day says, Paul, you're going to love this guy. And they give me a link to this Casper guy. Bloody hell. This is what it looks like. Lots of references to Friar Tuck from Sherwood Forest. But, oh, what a talented young man. He's mid-twenties or something like that. And I'll, I'll wax lyrical more about him probably on the next vid because I'm going to steal this thing he's done. And, um, and E flat, I thought, <laughs> first of all, I played it and I thought, ah, oh, it's a minute or something of just beautifulness. And I tried to learn, I thought, E flat, who plays in E flat? Freaks and perverts play in E flat. And I tend to try and learn it and then I put it into a proper key a real key like A or E and I'm playing it in E flat and I can I'm copying to see what he's doing and he's got all these half step rubs and that would only be possible in E flat um so there you go turns out he's not a freak or a pervert he's in fact very clever and E flat gives him all these half step rubs you'll see more probably in the next video because I'm going to try and steal that and uh come up with something that's my usual three minutes long I'll have to put lots of me in it, but I'm going to steal the essence of, of this guy. Go check him out. Absolutely wonderful player. He doesn't have a lot on YouTube, but oh, incredible. I gave a guitar lesson the other day to somebody who came up to my house. Uh, that was good. It's always very interesting that because the, the pupil, the customer, whatever you want to call them, they often don't have a strong idea as to what they want. It's always a little bit... You spend a wee while chatting about where are you with your playing and da 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 And sometimes the teacher has to just think, right, we're doing this. This is what I'm going to show you. Because you're looking at the watch thinking, I need to give this guy something tangible. There's no point in chatting for an hour. And I want to, if I'm taking money for it, I want to give something tangible that the person can go away. And then when his wife says, what did you learn? You know, you <laughs> so I took control maybe 20 minutes into the lesson and, and gave him some tangible things that he could go away with that seemed to meet with his approval. So it's quite interesting teaching guitar. Sometimes the pupil knows exactly what they want. Paul, that video you did there on the 10th of May, teach me that. But more often than not, it's, you no, know, give me something that you think. And, and it puts me in a position, oh God, what do you want like? And it's hard, but thankfully I gave him two or three things and I got him to film me doing it in slow-mo so that he's got something tangible 
to go away with. So that, that was interesting. What else did I do? I went to Newcastle on one of my little trips that I do. Played some guitars. And here comes my rant. Folks, 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 in guitar shops, when you're trying to sell a guitar, Jesus Christ, put me through a nice amp. And it has to have reverb. Don't put somebody through an amp without reverb. Would you like to try that, sir? I would like to try it. Would you like to try it through a lovely Fender Deluxe? No, I'd like to try it through some piece of plastic shit with fucking no reverb. Jesus Christ. So I'm expecting a nice valve amp because they're trying to sell guitars. And both shops I went into, they gave me, I had one that was just a pedal. I said, how do I change tones on that? Maybe I'm just old, of course. Maybe all the youngsters would know exactly how to navigate their way through this floor-mounted thing. And I think it was a floor-mounted thing that was coming out like a PA speaker. Come on, put me through a deluxe reverb or something nice. No, and both guitar shops, the other one put me through some cheapy sounding transistor based thing with no reverb. What the? Strange. That's my rant. I'll stop ranting now because then the other thing that I've been ranting about is these stupid adverts when you play YouTube and you get some, some dude. Stop right now learning the guitar the way you've been learning it. See this thing here? That's the pattern that you should be learning. I hope nobody falls for those crappy adverts, by the way. Oh, God. I could rant for hours about these. Um, right, rant's over. What else? A test drove the wee Mazda MX-5, or in America, you guys call it the Miata. Test drove that. Um, just thinking about my retirement. Loved it. Yeah, absolutely great. Wind in the hair. Yeah, um, I've always been into cars, all my life. Always loved cars. And I keep thinking about uh, when I retire, having a nice little car that I don't have to share, I don't have to give to my pupils and see them change gear badly and stuff like that. And I'm just hoping to get my hands, before it all goes electric, whatever, my hands on one of these little Mazdas or something. So I'm sitting down in the thing, my arse on the ground, the bonnet, it's one of the only cars you can see the bonnet these days. So the bonnet stretching out in front, stubby little gear shift. Oh, Mr. Cook, just you have it for half an hour there. So I'm round the back roads. Oh, I absolutely loved it. Absolutely great. Right, I've babbled enough. Nobody wants to hear me talk about Mazda MX-5s. So have a lovely day, evening, wherever you are. And thank you again for all your wonderful comments. They're, they make me feel very... Filled. I feel very filled when I read all these lovely comments. And occasionally I get one saying, you're a dick. Fine. But most of them are lovely. Thank you very much. Have a nice day and I'll see you on the next vid. Bye for now.